So Hillary, I'm so excited to be speaking with you in that uh, very exciting context of your car. <laughs> and uh, um, you are um, obviously a kind of leading, leading architect of your generation. And also we're so um, lucky to have you at GSAP as leading the core studio sequence, uh, but also in particular the housing studio. Um, GSAP has a very long history of looking at housing as the intersection of architecture and the city and you have really uh, kind of rethought what the studio can be um, both in terms of relational thinking you know focusing on New York but then comparing New York to other uh, cities Mexico City and and uh, and other uh, Miami, Los Angeles, etc. Um, you've thought about new ideas about luxury. Uh, you've kind of encouraged the invention of new typologies um, for housing. And I wanted in particular to ask about those and also how housing today, the studio is engaging with questions of climate change through materials and the envelope uh, in particular. Uh, good, thank you, Amal. It's great to, to talk to you this morning. I'm sorry from my car, <laughs> but in these times we are doing this, which is great. Um, yeah, so I think for uh, leading the housing studio for about 10 years now uh, at the school and teaching with many faculty, we have a really great group of uh, other teachers also working pretty in-depthly on housing their focus um, in their own practices. So it's a really great group, I think, um, colleagues that are all sharing in similar concerns, although approaching them in slightly different ways. So it makes the studio a really rich environment for exploring a subject like urban collective housing. Uh, and certainly being a school in New York City, Columbia is really, um, I think, has an amazing opportunity because we have as our main subject right outside of our doors, something we can engage in on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's very much part of our, our studio brief um, that we look at. So the studio focuses on housing in New York City. Uh, the sites we engage in are in the city, have primarily been in outside of the school, very close, uh, always within walking distance to the campus. Um, sometimes a little bit of a walk, but we, we make it over to the South Bronx, who's been the last probably five years that we focused more carefully in those particular neighborhoods. Um, that is free to explore anything, so a range of uh, different affordability levels, questioning issues around market, um, issues around policy are very much part of the studio. How does architecture engage uh, in policy? Um, and what's interesting about our studio that we have focused on housing uh, for New York is that it's a long history of housing, um, both in terms of development within the city, um, but it really reflects the development of housing um, across the city, across the state, and then across the country. So it's a lot of our housing policies originated in New York City. Um, and then as such, the types of housing evolve um, in tandem with that. And sometimes you see an invention of a housing type uh, that then in turn influences policy that becomes not just citywide, but nationally, adopted nationally. Um, and there's a housing project right near our campus that um, really reflects that from the 50s. Uh, and so these are some of the things that, that start to shape the basis for the studio. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not just that we're designing without thinking beyond um, a greater issues. And so students get that complementary of design with also policy, urban planning, um, historic preservation, real estate development, all of the other uh, disciplines that are housed in our school that you're working on um, beyond just our architecture program. So it's really great to do that. Um, we're also, uh, a lot of this is reflected too with the other faculty in these other disciplines. And so uh, a professor like Richard Plunts, who wrote a very famous book on housing and urban design. Uh, Andrew Dalkart has also done a lot of work through historic preservation. And these um, form some of the basis of our readings are Gwendolyn Wright, and Michael Bell, um, people also like Stephen Hall and Laurie Hawkinson have also been working on subjects of housing and have taught in the studio previously. So we have a really, a really in-depth um, look at housing through faculty um, within the studio and, and beyond as well. One way that you've really uh, brought that history to bear on the present is through your cut sheets, um, as well as the, the transfer 
uh, the kind of transcripts that you've done with architects such as uh, Michael Maltzen or Tatiana Dobao, uh, sort of bringing that history to this moment and seeing how there are very exciting new practices that are building on that history to rethink housing for today, but also for the future. Com completely, totally. I think one of the things to just, we've been trying to keep in mind um, as the students progress through the core and then go on to the advanced studios is that they will be engaging in many other contexts where we have been um, until, I'm not sure now, future, but uh, how, how this will proceed to start to think about the global conditions, um, but to complement New York and what the students learn in New York City, you know, looking abroad, um, we have introduced many different housing projects from around the world. Um, part of it is that the students are also from all of these places, and we ask them to bring to the studio examples that they know, um, and then also we look at those projects in depth through um, a kind of analysis and documentation, uh, drawing, making models, uh, and just trying to understand some of these housing projects through different things. Not only policy where possible, but things like uh, climate, uh, environment, uh, different kinds of just basic understanding of housing, lighting conditions, things like stairs, uh, egress, um, accessibility through elevators, you know, the most basic things related to, to housing um, are things we're looking at. But then understanding too, what are local kind of um, building materials, how, how are buildings put together, what is available, what is ethical. Um, some of these questions are, are all on the table for, for the housing studio. To help the students engage in that, um, we've started a series of things called cut sheets um, that look at both these projects through um, the kind of traditional representation that we all need to know as architects, like plans and sections. And then I've also introduced other kinds of representation drawings, perspectives, um, uh, renderings, uh, things like this that make each project then unique from the architect's perspective. And one of the key questions I've been asking of the students um, and, and perhaps all of the faculty as well is just that if we're working on housing, what else are we doing? Housing in the United States as a practice has been uh, looked at really as a specialty practice because of all of the requirements needed. Um, and so it seems at times onerous to other um, pra kinds of practices mm -hmm. to take that on even though we really need so much design in housing. Uh, and so this way we've, we've been looking at and identifying offices that are doing housing as well as other kinds of design work and that housing sits alongside those design projects in their office. And so to think of somebody like Maltz, Michael Maltzen, who was the first architect we looked at for the transcripts and housing series, a book project and also lecture. Uh, the, these architects come and they come studio specific where the housing studio focused on housing <laughs> a lot. Uh, and then from that, we transcribe the lecture and complement it with other essays by scholars and other practitioners uh, with images and drawings. Uh, and the cut sheets uh, kind of start started that whole process. And um, altogether, we have about 125 examples uh, from New York City, but also from around the world for the students to look at. Um, each year in the housing studio, uh, we meet two days a week for studio, but a third day we meet for just lectures. Uh, and there are a range of scholars and experts and other practicing um, uh, professionals that come and speak on the subject of, of housing. We've had Roseanne Haggerty come to talk about issues around homelessness, uh, to someone also like Matt Oppenheimer to talk about structures and housing. So there's a wide range of expertise that is brought to the, to the design studio. I also wanted to touch on your own work because of course you bring just incredible expertise, um, both in terms of your research, you were you know, one of the first to look at how you know housing and health, uh, and and sh and and surely now uh, I think in this current uh, COVID nineteen context, you know, bringing focusing on this question of housing and health is is really interesting, and I'm sure you're already thinking about this for studio. Um, and then I also wanted to touch upon your own beautiful work uh, on housing. You've been doing uh, actual housing projects in in uh, in Mexico as well as in uh, Washington D.C. Um, and you know, kind of, where are we at? When when will we see be you know see great images of these projects? Thank you. Um, yeah, I think I've been 
interested in health and its intersection with architecture and urbanism for quite some time. I was really lucky to participate in a project through the Center for Canadian Architecture called Imperfect Health and published an essay there as well as some other texts um, through um, Harvard Design Magazine looking at um, health, the well, well, well issue, which was based on uh, travel that I did with students from GSOP to Rio de Janeiro uh, and looking at a flavella there and the, the kind of incredible um, challenges faced through building, but yet amazing uh, community uh, of people that live in that favela and have small businesses and um, choose to live there as opposed to living in other places where they can. And so um, trying to understand the kind of rich and, and deep complexity uh, of issues that surround a place like that, for instance. Uh, and then, you know, looking more carefully through issues of just affordability, equity uh, in the studio and the site for, for sure in the South Bronx is something that's been important with respect to that um, and understanding the community there in parallel with places like Mexico. So typically the studio has a, a site in the South Bronx and we look at a certain group uh, of people and try to understand their context here versus where they might be uh, associated with um, a sort of so social association uh, through places like Mexico. Um, and so um, thinking a little bit about how you have people working in, in um, working and living, and that's one of the subjects of the studio. Uh, and also in our own work in my office, um, trying to understand this different, um, the differences between places. And so uh, New York, we've seen a shift from families to households. Mm -hmm. In other cities, we're still talking about housing through families and that structure for sure. In Mexico, we see that. Uh, the kitchen becomes incredibly important in that case, um, just culturally um, and uh, in, in relation to the dynamic of, of living. Uh, in places like Washington, D.C., trying to understand affordability um, has been through creating, uh, in the case of a project I'm currently working on, about 63 units of all affordable housing and some for the permanent supportive housing, uh, and that requires larger bedrooms. Um, and it's the same in New York City, but in Washington, D.C., the square footage is a little bit bigger. Uh, and, and, and there are many more of those kinds of units uh, and trying to understand that in the context of, uh, for instance, the mayor there is doing a much larger initiative um, and trying to build about 50,000 units um, by 2025, um, which is still not enough. Um, and they're not any different than New York needing more, more housing. But in terms of the health and, and in the situation we're in now, finding ourselves having to be isolated, uh, how to still have a kind of relationship to the exterior world, um, both physically but visually, um, being able to have access to light and fresh air, um, trying to understand just sequence from entry to your your own individual unit and how that happens. And we can, one of the things I'm working on right now is researching the subject of staircases uh, and vertical transportation and, and trying to understand where people actually can mix um, and to what degree they can mix and interact. And um, some architects you see their work have, have reduced this down to people sharing just two units off of a, a stair uh, and, and other things like this. And I think it's quite exciting and important research and, and if we're going to continue to live in this way of having to isolate but still feel the need yeah. to connect at smaller scales, which is different than just completely isolating and corresponding only through video. Well, thank you, Hillary. I don't know of anyone or any focus that would be more timely. Um, thank you so much for your time. I know that uh, I have no doubt that um, the studio will be uh, transformed one more time and really exciting uh, next year. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dan and Andres. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay,